No, obviously, your law of yours depend on the uh, daily politics for all your TV needs. That's clear. <laughs> Where else would you go? But if you found yourself flicking between the news networks recently, you may have noticed that alongside the likes of the BBC, CNN, uh, France 24 and Al Jazeera, is a network called RT. It used to be called Russia Today. Now it's just RT. It's expanding rapidly, and the UK version is broadcast here from London, and it was launched late last year. It's bankrolled entirely by the Russian government, and its coverage of the conflict in Ukraine in particular has led to accusations that it's biased, even Kremlin propaganda. The network says it's just offering a different perspective. Here's a show called Going Underground. It's now being broadcast from London. You're watching Going Underground, I'm Afshin Ratansi. Coming up in today's show, with Islamist groups until recently supported by our government capturing new territory in Syria, we look at David Cameron playing fast and loose with the British public about the war against President Bashar al-Assad. And with Britain in the dock at the European Court of Human Rights over horrific torture allegations, we speak to the former Director of Intelligence of the IRA. All this and more on today's Going Underground. Well, we can afford better graphics than we can. The presenter of the show, mm. Afshin Ratanzi, joins us now. Welcome. Uh, how many people in Britain are watching this? Oh, millions, I think, very much so. I mean, no, we've got really. to remember, <laughs> <Not> really, <laughs> how remember many? that YouTube is the biggest platform for Yeah, no, views. I wasn't asking about YouTube. How, what's the size of your Half audience? Half a million is the records that we Half get. Half a million? Reach really? Uh, it's uh, early days. You know, no, I understand that. No, no, I understand that. But I just want... That's not audited a half a million, is it? You just kind of made that up, didn't you? Those are the figures that we like have some of from your our marketer people. Oh, you're marketing yeah, people. Yeah. How, many, how many does, it, how many does Daily Politics get? About 200, 220,000, maybe more on a Wednesday. Yeah, more well, than a Wednesday. That's not well, like 350,000. Yeah, but BBC we're audited. Been, how long has the BBC been here? Uh, not long enough. <laughs> uh, what's it like being funded by the Kremlin? It's interesting because I suppose... I was thinking the other day that, uh, reflecting on your career with Rupert Murdoch, and you said you used to dream in the middle of the night uh, about him occasionally because you were funded by him. I don't dream no, about no, Vladimir I didn't, Putin. Actually, I said that some people still had nightmares about him. <laughs> and he I, did, I, I never dream. <laughs> the thing is, I don't dream about Vladimir Putin. I mean, I, in all seriousness... Well, that would be a nightmare. I, well, there's a view, I don't know, you know. We've got to be impartial as broadcast. <laughs> yeah, not one you Ofcom, <laughs> Ofcom will be on your tail. No, well, I actually, mean, Ofcom's on your tail, isn't it? How, how many times have you been investigated? I think there are a whole series of inquiries. But I have previous, I mean, they were often... Often uh, investigating, in fact, they banned the Iranian show, uh, channel Press TV here, of course. But I think more importantly, I was at the BBC. I've been at the BBC for most yeah. of my life. I lived through two director general's resignations over uh, investigative journalism, basically. The Iraq War and the Zircon spy satellite program. You know, when it comes to bias, when it comes to Kremlin funding, we can still offer a different take on events. Like just now, you had the take on the Paris events. We would have had a different voice, not just, uh, I mean, with respect, Tony Blair's former chief of staff, sure. a, Muslim but, but with, a Muslim with known links to the intelligence services and someone from the Henry Jackson Society. Sure, but you would be well aware that the BBC has many different voices over the course of its output on the Paris. Uh, I mean, last night I, I watched Newsnight, which had a French uh, a cultural, cultural intellectual story. on it, saying there should be limits to what the press can do and basically criticising the magazine for even uh, having the temerity to have these cartoons. But so you get many voices. No, you don't. You really, you don't? really don't. And I think that's, I mean, RT motto is question more. We want a multiplicity of loads of different views, but as this program in its coverage of the Paris, uh, in the fallout of the atrocity in Paris, did you not see there was something odd? You yourself, Andrew, said they were highly trained. How do you know these people were highly trained? Because I've watched the uh, footage of what they did, and see, I've we spoken, and I've like spoken that on to RT. you. Aren't? Excuse we'll me, say, I watch RT. We'll say some people and I've also think spoken that. to military experts who say that they were clearly trained in the double. Which military tap. experts? The same military experts that have talked so nonsense to the BBC highly, so, for years. So you don't think they were highly trained? 
I don't know. I'm not a military oh, expert. Right. Well, but I do know they the left their passport ID card at the mm. scene, which is yeah. very clever. When you're involved they went to in the wrong address. They used a the car instead mistakes. of bikes. I mean, why, I don't why, know. Um, why what, do you say it with such what, certainty? Um, what stories have you published that the Kremlin haven't liked? Um, I, I'm not in touch with the Kremlin. I have no contact with the Kremlin. When I was at the BBC what Today programme... What stories have you done that you think the Kremlin wouldn't like? Um, I suppose we've done stuff about homophobia, transgender issues, uh, issues that are certainly against Russian law in Russia. We've been... Uh, have you done items critical that? of the Kremlin's uh, attitude towards homosexuals? Well, it's, a, it's called RTUK. It's about Britain. We're not talking about Russia, are we? Yeah, but Even when also, we talk about Syria or company, France, RT, we talk Has about... RT done items uh, critical of the Kremlin's attitude to homosexuals? Very much so. There have been when? entire programmes, entire scenes. Look at it up on YouTube. I mean, you know, just have a look. Critical. Do your research, Andrew. Oh, we always do our research. We've had entire programmes with speaking uh, of some research, of our own correspondents speak, criticising well, Russian we do. Policy. Speaking of research, shall we go through the list of journalists who've left you complaining about being dictated by Moscow? Go ahead. OK, Stacey Bivens, US journalist, instructed to write a piece on Germany as a failed state. That's an interesting uh, phenomenon. British journalist Sarah Firth resigned over biased coverage of the Malaysian Airlines. Anchor Liz Wall resigned over RT coverage of the Ukraine. I cannot be part of a network funded by the Russian government that whitewashes the actions of Mr. Putin. American journalists complained of a disproportionate focus on Occupy because it made Western governments look back here. Go through all of this. He, he, well, you asked if I did yeah. my research, and we have. I've also, here's a really good one, Anastasia Cherkina. Mm. You know who she is? She works in uh, the ITUK newsroom, actually. And her oh. father is? The Russian ambassador. That's to the UN. The and what did she do? She interviewed her own father on air. Look, I, I mean, <laughs> a conflict of you know. Uh, next, you'll say, next you'll say David Dimbleby is related to Jonathan Dimbleby well, or something. I, is he? I think, I think, is, the, I think uh, the main is, point is here. not the father of the prime minister. No, I, think, I think in all seriousness, there really is a serious point here, which is on the BBC, uh, when it comes to the most crucial issues, like war, which uh, Jonathan, of course, was a key part in. Greg Dyke had to leave. The director general of the BBC had to leave. That debate is not open here at all. Really? And and don't forget to watch RT. Which is a Diane Abaddon. Mm. She's a huge critic of the war and what Jonathan uh, Powell's government Why did. We've had a discussion. Anyway, I'm not running your show, but RT UK. <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. RT UK <laughs> going underground. You know, we will ask those questions that you you guys just won't. Well, I, well I'm not sure. I tell you one one thing. Do you watch Russia today? I have to admit, I've not watched Russia today. I, no. I have, uh, and actually, I rather like it. Come on the show. Now. I rather like it because I think it is, you know, it is complete Kremlin propaganda. Yeah. But that in itself is useful. How is it because, complete Kremlin propaganda? Because you know, it's a good way of knowing what Mr. Putin thinks <laughs> right. and what Russian foreign policy aims are. For example, to really find out what Russia's aims were in the Ukraine, the great thing was to watch Russia today. How I found it really it helpful. into my head when I'm doing Going Underground or the RTUK. 50 odd what young do you journalists that we've hired. <laughs> it, it Does the Kremlin me, beam it down to? It them? depends on what the purpose is. If its purpose is supposed to be propaganda, it's not going to succeed, not going to have any chance yeah. of succeeding. If it's supposed to be an aspect of soft power, it's not going to succeed because it has, there is no attraction of the Russian way of life for people overseas, any mm -hmm. more than there is for the Chinese way of life. The reason the BBC World Service succeeds is because people, A, trust it to be impartial, and B, there is no attraction the of soft of the power. The BBC just last week, two weeks ago, said there's no way they can compete with RT. Well, well, we'll, we'll see. The, the market, though, I know you don't believe in it. That will uh, we'll tell. But anyway, let a thousand flowers bloom. What's thank wrong with that? Much, and Andrew. thank you for thank coming you. on. I look forward to it. I am, a, I am your viewer. No, you you're have a today viewer. met your viewer. We, we have millions. <laughs> Joe. I want you to find them for next time.